Hi, so we're going to do a video on um, beginner yoga for beginners or beginner yoga basics, right? So if you have not ever done yoga or you've done yoga but you want a little more um, finesse on some of the subtleties of the poses, you've come to the right place. I'm Janelle, I'm happy to be here with you today. And um, so let's just talk about yoga a little bit first. So why yoga is beneficial for the body? So many good things. Beneficial for the body, beneficial for the mind. Yoga is different from, from just regular stretching because it actually incorporates breathing with movement. So we usually, um, you'll, hear, you'll hear instructors say, you know, inhale this move, exhale this move. And so it really kind of coordinates breath with movement. It's just so good for the body overall. Um, uh, you know, helps elongate the spine, helps um, um, move the body in ways we don't, wouldn't normally move. Like we're such a society of, of sitters sitting at our desk, sitting at our, on our, on our, uh, at our uh, steering wheel, driving our car, you know, sitting watching television. And so it gets us up, it gets the spine moving. Um, you know, just for example, we're usually rounded, our shoulders are usually rounded on a computer or a cell phone or a steering wheel and so yoga reminds us to take our posture into consideration and just um, just move again and move the spine and move the back and move all the muscles in ways that we don't normally um, a lot of things work on counteractive poses so when we round the spot when we um, when we um, you know, do any kind of back bend. We want to round the spine then to kind of um, make up for that. If I'm if I'm stretching, say the front of my hip in a pose, then I want to then I want to stretch the opposing muscle on uh, the back. Um, all those kind of things. It's just yoga is great for the body. And yoga, the word yoga means actually to join or to bring together. And so. I think, um, I think, I mean, for me in my life, it's been the time when I can come to the mat and I can follow along whether I'm, whether I'm teaching really or whether I'm, or whether I'm taking a class with someone. It's a time when I can just forget about everything else, turn everything else out. It's just me and the mat, and, um, and I love that. So let's get into some basics. Um, there's definite some tools, definitely some tools that you can have that you can use, but you don't need them. Um, one tool that's really handy is a block, a yoga block to have, but again, not, not totally necessary, not something that we, you, um, you have to have, but something that's kind of nice to have in some of the poses. Uh, and also nice to have a blanket, but you don't need anything special. You can also use like a roll, rolled up beach towel or um, uh, something like that, or, or a, a bath towel. You don't really need a blanket, but blankets are nice too. There's also straps. I don't have one right here, but there's also yoga straps. But again, you can use a belt. You can use a longer towel for certain things. So you really can do yoga for every body because you can really do yoga anywhere. I know sometimes when people travel, they do yoga in their hotel rooms. Um, you know, yoga you can really do anywhere with little or no equipment. So um, yoga is for everyone. So let's just go and get into some basics of uh, some of the basic poses, some of the kind of alignment on some of the basic poses. And I'm gonna to try to go under 30 minutes with this, 20 to 30 minutes. So, um, and, and of course yoga is so vast and so broad that I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be scratching the surface. But it's a good place to start. If you've never done yoga, get up off the couch and we'll, um, we'll go through this together. So the first, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go into some, um, one, of the, one of the stretches that almost every yoga class, almost every yoga instructor includes at some point. And it's an on, on all fours with the knees and hips in alignment and the wrists, uh, elbows and shoulders in alignment. It's called all fours. And we usually start by a really simple way to coordinate breath with movement to start, and the knees are about hip width apart, uh, right under the hips. Um, it is coordinating breath with movement in this in this uh, in this pose. So we we talk about cat cow. So right now my spine is neutral. In other words, it's not it, it's not. It's not, it's not concave, it's not rounded, it's just nice and neutral. But we're gonna do that in a cat-cow. So let's take in, let's first of all inhale together, and as we inhale, I'm gonna go ahead and let my back sway a little bit. This would be the cow part of the pose. Broaden the chest and take an inhale. 
And then when I get ready to exhale, I'm going to do the opposite, around the spine, taking the belly button to the spine, and turning the tailbone sort of down to the mat, and bringing, um, bringing that nice round arch to my back as I exhale. So just flowing through, flow through on your own, a few of these, inhaling, and then when you're ready for the exhale, tucking up, exhaling. Just back and forth with your breath. And everyone, and that's the thing about yoga, go ahead and continue that with your, with your breath while I um, talk to you about a few more things. Inhaling and exhaling with rounding and moving your spine. You can start with the, you can start with the basic, you can start with a, a very a slight rounding and concave of your spine, but um, then move to more as you warm up. Um, but yoga, the important thing about yoga is that you listen to your own body. You follow your own lead. You don't, if you're in a class with someone else, you, really not to look around and see what someone else is doing and try to copy that, but to, to work on your own, work at your own pace with your own, with your own body. We all are living in different bodies. We all move differently. We all, um, our bodies are all made differently. And so what's right for someone else is not necessarily right for you. So listening to your body is key. So come back to a neutral spine. We're going to go into a pose that is really central to yoga. It's an inversion, which just means the head is lower than the heart. And you'll hear it if you haven't already or you don't know what it is, you'll, you'll hear it over and over in a yoga pose. And it's just tucking the toes, bring the knees up off the mat, setting the hips up and back to down dog. So we're pressing the mat back in a way. Let's start out with, a, with, um, with bent knees as we press the mat back and away, just to start. And then maybe straighten out one leg first, just to sort of see how that feels on the back of the leg. Maybe bending that knee again and straightening out the opposite leg, just to again see how that feels on the back of the leg. And maybe if we did okay with that, straightening both out. And I always like to say, kind of press the mat back and away. So we're pressing away, but we're also pressing back so that our head kind of comes, our ears are kind of uh, between, the, between the upper arms, between the biceps, but maybe not really, not, maybe not in your case. You can always keep those knees bent, heels up off the mat. And this is a down dog pose. Let's come to our knees now from here, and we do that really by rocking up onto the balls of the feet, bring the knees to the mat, and then we're gonna send the buttocks back to the heels in child's pose. This is extended child's pose, so those hands are out in front. There's variations of this too, hands down at the sides, wide knees, taking the, keeping the big toes together, but taking the knees out wide. And just kind of just getting used to this pose here. Child's pose is a pose that you can come back to any time within practice as well. It's a really good one to come back to when um, when something might just be a little bit um, a little bit you're done. It's a little bit too strenuous, or or you feel like your body's saying, "Okay, I'm done. I'm ready for a rest." Come back to child's pose. Come on up, back to all fours. We're going to tuck toes again and come back into a down dog position, sending the hips again up and back. Now, so so it, it, let's talk about hands a little bit. We talked about um, feet and and knees. Let's talk about hands and elbows up the arms. The hands should be cupping the mat, fingers splayed splay wide with, with that for, first finger for, um, pointing right forward directly to the, the top of the mat. And the hands are cupped, the palms are cupped on the mat. So if I came around and kind of tried to put a finger in between your index finger and your big thumb, I could get my finger through uh, under there that it's cupping the mat so it's not flat. And then the elbow's soft, so not locking out. If you're a person that locks out joints, not locking out that joint, those elbow, elbow joints. And just keeping, keeping a nice slight bend, micro bend, to the knees and the elbows so it's nice and soft. Good, and back down to the knees, and press back to child's pose. We're gonna go through some of the standing poses now, some of the common um, standing poses. You know, I always think of yoga as being three things, kind of a combination of strength, flexibility, and, um, and endurance. And those three things to kind of get us through yoga, I always think, um, 
are are the big the big three really with with yoga, right? So bringing let's let's uh, before we get to same position, let's bring that left leg forward. I like this as a stretch. I also like to incorporate it in my yoga flows as well, so that you have uh, some some uh, stretch on this on this uh, in this case the right uh, front hip. This is called Anjaneyasana. And it really, that's what it really is for, is to stretch those hip flexors. And we can go ahead and change to the other side. So we'll come back into a on the knee pose, bring that right leg forward. And so the, the hips are kind of forward, those hip points are forward, and we're just shifting forward so that we are now stretching the front of the left hip. There's variations on this too. Hands can be like they were just for me on the waist. They can be on the knee. The arms can sweep up. There's variations of this pose. But the big thing is that we're stretching, we're creating some space and some distance here on this uh, left front hip. All right, bring the hands to the mat and we'll come forward. I'm going to go through a couple um, easy half sun salutes. And again, this is a good way to start a practice to, uh, and then it'll lead us into some standing poses. Sun salutes are what a lot of instructors, myself included, use to warm up the body and also then to coordinate breath with movement. It's a, it's a great starter for any yoga practice. So let's just do a half sun salute now. We would inhale the arms up. Palms come together down through the center line of the body as we bend the knees slightly and come forward into a forward fold. So a forward fold can be anywhere. You know, for you it might be here now, it might be a little lower. We're, we're trying to um, fold in until we feel it in the backs of the legs, of course in the back, but mostly again in the backs of the legs. And then we'll halfway lift. The halfway lift, can, the fingertips can be on the mat, they can rest on the shins, and we're just really working here toward the back being um, parallel with the floor, as well as opening the chest and elongating the spine. Exhaling back to fold. Bend the knees slightly. Roll up one vertebra at a time, and inhaling overhead. Hands down through heart center, and coming to Tadasana standing pose called mountain pose. This is a great one to feel your feet, to try to see if you can sort of feel the corners of your feet. Some people say there's three corners, some people say they feel four. The, fur, the, the ball of the foot, maybe two corners there, and either one in the heel or two in the heel. So what, what do you feel as you feel your feet? And we don't often think of our feet enough and really feel how our feet are grounded. It's a great grounding pose. Um, and, and we talk about it as mountain pose because mountains rise up and, and they get their strength if they're rooted, but they rise, so root to rise. It's a great concept in yoga as well, that we're rooted, we're grounded, but we rise up out of that. Inhale, arms overhead. Let's do a few more half sun salutes. Our palms come down through the center. Forward fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees around the spine, come on up. Inhale, arms up. Hands down through heart center, Tadasana or mountain pose. Again, get a little rock there. Feel that center of gravity. Feel right where you're, right where the, the geographic center of your body and getting that centered right over the knees and the, and the feet and the head rests right over that center line too. Inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. The variation of this fold, you can always clasp forearms with opposite hands. Let gravity do some work here. You feel this even more through the backs of the legs oftentimes. Unclasping the hands, bending the knees, rounding the spine, coming up one vertebra at a time. Inhaling overhead and exhaling back to mountain pose. That was just a half sun salute. There's lots of variations with, this, with the sun salutes as well that you can do to warm up the body. That was just um, 
a little preview to our sun salutes and a great way to start any day as well. So let's come into a couple standing poses. So you've probably, again, you've heard of uh, or done warrior poses. So I'm gonna take my left foot forward, my right foot back at a 45 degree angle. So my toes are at a 45 degree angle. My front knee, as I come forward, the front knee is gonna stop uh, until it's right in line with that ankle. And then I'm gonna come forward for warrior one. The hips aren't, as you can see, they're not totally forward because they can't be. Someone called this warrior one and a half some, one time. So the hips are actually, my hip points are actually pointed here at an angle as well. As my arms are up, palms facing each other. This is warrior one. You can go a little deeper into that warrior. The knee never going past the toe. Warrior one. Opening up now to warrior two. It's just kind of an opening up of the body, the front of the body. Arms are long. The gaze. Uh, is out over that front middle finger. The legs are exactly the same. I saw that 45 degree angle with that back foot. And that would be warrior two. All right, since we're in the warriors, warrior one, warrior two, you might ask, what is warrior three? Warrior three is a balance pose. So I'm going to uh, step forward a little bit with my right foot. And there's ways to get into this, and usually in a flow, we flow into this pose. Arms can be traditionally here at the heart center. And I'm going to bring this left, this left knee off the ground and then just take it back. Again, there are ways to get into warrior three. But generally, warrior three is where the, 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 uh, what we're going for is that the torso of the body and that back leg in one nice long line, just slight bend in that front leg, in that standing leg, and coming out of warrior three. So that's some of the common standing poses. Um, let's do wide leg forward fold or prasarita. So with with uh, with wide leg forward fold, it's kind of similar to the forward folds we just did, although except the wide legs are wide. And how wide should they be? Approximately when we have the arms out to the side, we want the elbow, the wrist rather, and the ankles about in line with each other. Uh, and of course, differences um, with your body and how your body um, is shaped and formed. But that's generally it. We want the, uh, the uh, wrist somewhat over the, uh, the ankles. And then hands to heart center, we're gonna fold forward from these hip creases. Keeping a nice long spine as we fold forward, letting the hip, the hands come off of the hips and coming down to the mat. <clears throat> this just stretches a lot of things. This is a great standing stretch. I'm gonna come up halfway, halfway lift like we did in the sun salutes. Halfway lift, and then come back down. And I'm gonna roll up, I'm gonna take my chin to my chest, round the spine and come on up from this pose. I'm gonna bring those heel toe, those feet in together now, so I'm standing. So let's go over what makes the difference between a high lunge, high crescent lunge, and a, um, and a warrior one that we already went over. So again, warrior one, this foot is at a 45 degree angle. The arms are generally up, and this is generally what warrior one. So the difference really is in this back foot. If you can tell, I just picked my back heel up off the mat, and my, the ball of my foot is on the mat now. So this would be a high crescent lunge. We use high crescent lunge a lot. We use it to come up um, from a down dog. We come up into a high crescent lunge a lot. And then also to use it to open up into warrior two. Okay. So let's do a few balance poses. A common one is tree. Um, so let's stand and use the right, the right leg as the standing leg. So tree, we can use if we have a block, we can start out with tree with the block. I'm gonna stand on my right leg. Um, 
my left toe would be could stand and kind of kickstand either on the on the mat or on the block and that would be a great place to start out for tree hands are typically again at heart center but can be anywhere um, and then it, then another uh, kind of progression I guess you would say if you don't have a block don't want to use a block if you don't have a block here's that here's the here's the progression there you can bring the center the foot up to the calf you can also rest it on the knees now as long as you're not pressing you don't want to press the knee or you can bring it all the way up to the the thigh the inner thigh and this would be a tree pose in a flow we can move right from tree into warrior three we can move into a lot of things in a flow class flow just means we're putting things all together all right so let's come out of tree good um, let's just come to the mat now. We'll do a few stretches on the mat. Um, I'll, uh, we'll go over kind of my, some of my favorites are twists. I love, I love um, twisting stretches, especially for the end of a yoga session because I feel like it's kind of like wringing out the internal organs and twists are great for detoxing, de-stressing, and digestion. So I love to end a, a yoga uh, session with um, with uh, with the twisting move. So let's come down to the mat. I'll face you. I'll take my legs out. One that also, before we get into a twisting move, one uh, move I also really like is Dandasana or seated staff pose. And I like it, and I'll turn to the side here. I like it so much because in Dandasana, everything is, is being utilized. Where it's a very um, active pose, not a passive pose. Our shoulders are backing down, the shoulder blades are wrapping around that upper spine, elbows face the back, palms are right here next to the hips with my fingertips facing forward, and my legs are engaged, feet are flexed, legs are engaged, and it really is a challenging pose. It looks just like a sitting pose, but it's really a challenging pose to hold, but the, what I like most about it is it puts that beautiful natural curve in the spine the way it's supposed to be. I think if we all sat like this, uh, um, we wouldn't have as many back problems. As opposed, again, to the rounding of the shoulders over. We're taking the shoulders back. And again, wrapping the shoulder blade, that action of wrapping those shoulder blades around the upper spine. Okay, so I'm going to take my right knee, bend my right knee, take it over the left foot. And then I'm going to use, I'm going to reach around with my right hand and use this left elbow to kind of hook on the outside of the right knee to open up and there you can get that twisting motion that's where the twisting motion um, happens between <laughs> between um, my little dog is is uh, rubbing her back I don't know if you can see she's right in front of me rolling around the mat rolling around in the front before in front of the mat she wants to be involved but yeah, so, so twisting, you can see my torso is twisted and I'm getting a lot of, um, I'm getting a lot out of this, this twist right now. Good. And let's do the other side and come to the other side. So I'm not, so I'm facing you, taking the left foot over the right leg, again, reaching back with that left hand taking the elbow, hooking it sort of for leverage, for some leverage to open up to the side. And of course, the standing poses that we did, warrior one, warrior two, high crescent lunge, warrior three, you can practice those all on the other side as well. We just did one side. But in yoga, very typical to do, um, to do both sides. I mean, that's, we have two sides of the body. So generally in a flow, I'll run through something all the way through on one side of the body, and then, and then maybe short rest, and then run through it all again on the left side of the body. Stretch is the same way. You wanna stretch both sides of the body. And coming out of that, let's come down to the mat now. Um, so there'll be, there's another twist. Again, I'm only gonna show this on one side, but always good, grasping behind the knees, coming on down to the mat, arms out to the side, 
and then we're going to lengthen that left leg, bringing the right knee into the chest. This is another version of a twist that you can do. It's called a supine twist. So I'm going to take this left knee with my, with um, the right knee, I'm sorry, with the right, with the left hand, and I'm going to bring it across the body just enough so that that right shoulder blade still stays attached to the mat, still stays in contact with the mat. And I'm not worried about how low the knee is, that's not the point here. I want to be able to feel the stretch, I want to get that, that twisting motion, and then I'm going to just pick up my head and look over that right, that right um, arm toward my right fingertips, just to get a little extra stretch. Sometimes in yoga too, closing your eyes, you can really feel it. And that's where I just was. I just closed my eyes because I was like, okay, I'm really feeling this. Sometimes when you take away one sensation, you can feel more in your body. And I look around at my students so much of the time, their eyes are closed and I just, it makes me happy because I know they're really feeling into their bodies and they're really feeling in to um, what, they're, what, what pose their body is holding. So I'm gonna come on up and we'll talk a little bit about kind of the ending pose of yoga. So the ending pose is Shavasana, and it's um, called corpse, stands for corpse pose. We, we uh, with, with Shavasana, it's a time for, um, it's a time for rest. It's a time, most importantly, for your central nervous system to kind of process everything that, that you just did. So we, you know, progressively go through the flow, generally in a flow class, in a vinyasa class or any kind of a flow class, we go through the flow, we do some ending stretches, and then we end up so that we're on our backs, maybe doing the, the supine twist that we just did or, or a variety of other poses, and then we end with Shavasana. So with Shavasana, you're just lying on the mat, really coming, coming down. You've probably been here for some, for some ending stretches. I like to tuck my shoulder blades under so that I'm, I, it helps broaden the chest as well as um, take the pressure off those, the scapula there. And then sort of the legs can just loosely, the feet come out to the side just loosely, the arms are loose, and then scanning the body, whether you're directed to or not, scanning the body for any areas of tightness. Because it really is a time just to release, let go, and let your uh, let whatever is coming to your mind come to your mind. You know, some people float; uh, they get real floaty, and they sort of have to come back into their body uh, after shavasana is over. Um, but um, shavasana is just a great um, uh, time for you. It's kind of your I look at it kind of as a reward for moving and breathing and stretching and bending and holding and all the things we do in yoga. And it's also, like I said, the purpose serves that that central nervous system can now process everything and we can get the most benefit out of our practice. So after Shavasana, most times your instructors will have you roll over to one side, get up nice and slowly. I, I defaulted almost to rocking up, but, um, but that's, and then we end, usually end um, with in a seated position, some a little bit of breathing, maybe a final intention or final thought, and then um, the word namaste. And what that generally means is the um, the light that is in me. I also I recognize uh, because that light is also in you that we are connected. We are one by that light. Um, namaste, generally fingertips to the forehead, and we kind of bow, showing again reverence to the practice of yoga and to each other. So that's kind of a little um, beginner, a little in intro to yoga, kind of gives you some, um, some ideas about some of the common poses that you may have seen or may have heard of and, and the, uh, the correct alignment and maybe what, what those things are good for. Um, I, I encourage you to do videos of other types. Uh, whether it's you know the stretching, whether it's a flow class, whatever it is, do do videos of other types, and um, explore yoga on your own a little more. Thanks for being with me today.